This section will discuss the Goldman lens and variations of this lens, such as the MagnaView lens, the Rich lens, etc. These lenses provide a beautiful view of the iridocorneal angle. They have a large area of contact and vault over the cornea. Because of this, they need to be filled with a methylcellulose coupling solution. They are excellent lenses to be used for surgical procedures in the angle, such as trabeculoplasty, and many of the clips, in fact, most of the clips in this web page are photographed through the MagnaView lens, which is a one mirror variation of the Goldman lens. However, for daily use, they are less convenient than a four mirror lens, and anything that's less convenient tends to be used less often. Additionally, the methyl cellulose degrades the images of subsequent photographs and makes subsequent perimetry challenging for the patient. One begins the examination by filling the concavity of the lens with methyl cellulose. It's important that there are no bubbles in the fluid. This can be done by beginning a stream of the coupling material on a tissue and then transferring the stream to the lens concavity. Alternatively, one can remove the dropper cap and deliver a glob of methyl cellulose into the lens concavity. The patient is instructed to look up and the inferior part of the lens is placed against the lower portion of the globe. The lens is tilted up and the patient is instructed to look straight ahead. I always warn the patient that they will feel material running down their cheek and I let them know that this material is not harmful. In fact, mouthwash is often made with methyl cellulose. I start by looking at the 12 o'clock mirror which allows me to look at the inferior angle, the deepest and most pigmented portion of the angle. I then rotate the lens clockwise and record the findings in a clockwise manner, 360 degrees around the iridocorneal angle. I find that if I hold the lens with three fingers and brace my other two fingers against the patient's face, that I can rotate the lens continuously without using the second hand and letting go of the slit lamp controls. This does take a little bit of practice. At the end of the examination, the lens is often sucked onto the patient's eye and one can remove it simply by pushing against the patient's eye with the index finger and breaking this seal.